Welcome to episode 54 in our series on the surnames of Appalachia and the American South. As always, we're interested in investigating the origins and meanings of pre-Civil War surnames. When we look further back in time than the Civil War, we're quickly running out of distant cousins in the old countries, if you know what I mean. Now, that doesn't mean that we're not genetically connected to the older populations in the old countries. We are indeed. It's just that folks who share common ancestors that are eight generations or further up the family tree do not appear on extended family lists because their shared DNA is barely, if not traceable. On today's show, we'll investigate the origins and meanings of eight requested surnames. I hope you'll join me. Let's get this surname party started. Number one, Hammock. Hammock or Hammock. I bet when I said Hammock, some of you did like I did. I recalled scenes of Gilligan and Skipper's Hut on Gilligan's Island. Naturally, I first thought that Hammock was given to a person who slept in a hanging fabric bed, but that's just not the case. This is an old pre-Anglo-Saxon name. It was taken from a habitational name, Hammock, in Devon, England. If you're thinking that means Hammock is uh, a Celtic name, that would be true as far as its roots are concerned. More specifically, its roots are Brythonic Celtic. Now, Brythonic Celtic languages include Breton, or Britain, Cornish, and Welsh. Guadalic Celtic languages include Scottish Gaelic, Irish Gaelic, and Manx Gaelic. Make sure to take notes because I will have a quiz at the end of class. Just kidding, of course. At the end of the day, I was unable to find Hammock among traditional surnames of Ireland, Scotland, or Wales. I think we're safe in calling Hammock an Anglo-Celtic surname. Number two, Thurston. All right, I know you're, you're going to be thinking that Van is on some kind of Gilligan's Island kick today, but I promise you, I'm presenting the names in the order that they were requested. I just happen to associate this one with Gilligan's Island. In case you're having trouble recalling names from that iconic TV show in the 60s, do you remember Thurston Howell III? His wife's name was Lovey. Despite the genteel nature of Thurston Howell's personality, the surname Thurston is of Anglo-Norse origin. How do we get that combination? Well, we have a Norse personal name Thor and Tun, or T-U-N, for enclosure. This means that the surname was born in England and was most likely given to people residing on or at Thor's enclosure. They must have been Vikings. Now, we have to ask the question of whether or not the surname moved about Great Britain and Ireland. Like our first name today, Hammock, it doesn't appear as though Thurston moved about the Isles. So I'm confident that Thurston is an Anglo-Norse surname. Number three, Persinger. When I received this request, I got a little bit excited. Well, a wee bit, I should say, if I were in Ireland or Scotland, but I'm going to say I got excited for sure. It was taken from the Swiss-German Bersinger. You might be wondering, why did I get so excited over that connection? Well, it's because I've been associated with SBS Swiss Business School in Zurich since 2014. I'll be going back there in March to do some lecturing to doctoral students on how to build a literature review. Now, SBS is internationally accredited. It's an internationally accredited institution and has students from around the world. SBS also has online courses that lead to undergraduate and graduate degrees. Now, that's a free commercial, by the way. The uh, Swiss-German origin of Bersinger means bear clan. After checking my sources for the name in the Isles, I came away thinking that this Swiss-German surname came to America straight from northern uh, Switzerland. It's not found among the traditional surnames of Ireland, Wales, or Scotland, or England for that matter. Folks, if you have watched a few of my surname videos, you would know that it's been unusual for us to receive a request for a surname that came straight to America from a continental location. Now, I'm fairly confident that we have one in Persinger. Number four, Robbins. As I just typed the name Robbins, memories of getting baptized at the age of 15 flooded my mind. That took place at Batley Baptist Church in Anderson County, Tennessee, a place called Batley. Now, <laughs> my pastor's name was Howard Robbins. And Preacher Robbins was an inspiration, and the fact that he had lost a leg and some fingers on a wintry battlefield in Europe during uh, World War II made me look up to him even more than I would have normally. Also, one of the prettiest girls in Oliver Springs was none other than Janice Robbins. I tell you these connections to help put a human face on a well-known surname. Robin entered the Isles with the Normans in 1066. Its origin is in France, where it was used as a double diminutive for a fellow named Robert. When an S is placed on Robin, we have the son of Robin. 
I was actually surprised to learn that Robins doesn't appear among the traditional surnames of Wales, Ireland, or Scotland because it's so plentiful in my neck of the woods. At the end of the day, I believe we're safe in calling Robins an English surname of Anglo-Norman origin. Number five, McCam. Here we are at number five and we finally have a Scottish surname. At first glance, one might think that it was originally given to a son of a person named Hamilton, but that's just not the case. It's actually a Gaelic pet form of McThomas. McHam doesn't appear among the traditional names of Ireland, Wales, or England, so I think McHam is a Scottish surname. Number six, Estep. The surname Estep originated in England along the Welsh border. Its meaning was rather pastoral. Now, I can imagine a family of Esteps enjoying a life in a lush green valley that was east of some place. Now, that's what it means, an eastern valley. I did not find uh, Estep among the common surnames of Wales, Ireland, or Scotland, so I believe that Estep is a quintessential rural English surname. Number seven, Drummond. Let's travel north of the Welsh-English border to a village called Drymond in Stirlingshire, Scotland. It was there that the clan Drummond established itself. It's also where the clan Buchanan also had significant lands, including the Buchanan Castle, which is now in ruins. While there's more than one possible origin for Drummond, it seems the most likely derivation came from the uh, Gaelic word for ridge. The Drummonds may well have been Caledonian ridge, ridge runners like Kentucky Hilltoppers. The name also appeared as a dweller on a ridge in Ireland, so it clearly has a Gaelic origin. I think a paper trail would be helpful in locating the origin of your line of drumming, but it's going to have a Gaelic origin, trust me on that. Number eight, O'Neill, 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 O'Neill. <laughs> Unless there are some adoptions or some hanky-panky among your ancestors and you have one of these spellings of O'Neill, you've got something to celebrate. Unless you're not into machismo and domineering men. Now what do I mean by that? If you have the M222 subclade in your L21Y chromosome haplogroup, it's believed that you are a direct descendant of Neil or Nile, a 5th century powerful Irish warlord. It's believed that there are some 3 million people alive today who are his direct descendants. That guy got around, did he not? This subclade has spread to other parts of the world, including Scotland, America, Canada, the lands down under. O'Neill means the descendant of Neil. But you could well have this Irish surname and still show a majority of Scottish or English DNA. A paper trail and DNA would be major assets for you. <clears throat> well friends, that's all I have for you today. I hope you got something meaningful out of our discussion. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If demand warrants it, I'll see you again soon. God bless you and yours. Bye-bye.